Welcome to the 2020 Online Girls Gymnastics Rules Interpretation Meeting for both Girls Gymnastics Coaches and Girls Gymnastics Officials. This is your only option for rules meeting credit for the 2021 season. My name is Deborah Moore. I'm the former Senior Director of Compliance in Sports Medicine and former sports administrator for girls gymnastics. I am officially retired, but I am still working full time for the Athletic Association. And it's my privilege to still work with the great sport of girls gymnastics. As you know, this is the oldest sport that the OHSAA sponsors for girls. And I have been privileged to serve for over 30 years. But I would like to introduce Emily Gates, who is a director of sports and will be assuming the administration of girls gymnastics. Emily also manages the sports of volleyball, field hockey, and baseball. And of course, also pictured on this slide is our director of development for officiating, Lori Powers Basinger. She will be presenting the gymnastics rules interpretations for this season when I complete the slides that deal with OHSAA regulations. This slide just lists the contact information for the individuals who support girls gymnastics in Ohio. Please refer to your manual at this link, which has just been posted to review information about the Coaches Association. We believe it's very important that all coaches become involved by joining the Ohio High School Girls Gymnastics Coaches Association. Your president is Cindy Fushimi, who is the head coach at Worthington Kilbourne High School, and her contact information is on this slide, as well as in the gymnastics manual. And the secretary is Gail Mondrell, head coach at Cincinnati Turpin High School. And again, her contact information is displayed on the slide as well as in your manual. In terms of the non-interscholastic date, coaches, please remind your gymnasts that the last date for participation in any club or non-school competition prior to joining your school team is Sunday, January 17th, 2021. Any competition after that date will render the student ineligible for the OHSA tournament. The contest limitations have not changed for high school. Those limitations are 14 meets and the school, not the individuals, but the school must compete in at least two interscholastic contests to be eligible for the team competition in the OHSAA tournament. This slide just displays the calendar as we have it currently for the 2021 school year. Picking up again on non-interscholastic participation, once a gymnast has participated in a contest for her school, she is not permitted to resume competition for a non-school program, club program, until after she has competed in her final contest for the school this season. Outside the season, instruction and competition are not restricted. Gymnastics coaches may provide instruction and coach their own students outside the season, provided such participation is not mandatory. These items on this slide deal with protecting student athletic eligibility. Please always refer all questions that you might have as a coach regarding student eligibility to your principal or in many cases, your athletic administrator. Be sure all your athletes and their parents have access to the eligibility publication, which is found at this site also found right off of our eligibility page at ohsaa.org. Speak to your athletic administrator about arranging for a mandatory preseason meeting with parents and students. These are required. And of course, more information can be found 
in the gymnastics manual at this link. I'd like to review the pupil activity program coaching permit, which is required of all coaches in this sport and all sports. Whether you're a paid coach or a volunteer coach, you must have this State Department of Education issued pupil activity permit. In addition, all gymnastics coaches shall be board approved. Complete the fundamentals of coaching course, which can be found at nfhslearn.com. That's a one-time requirement. Complete the concussion course, which is found at nfhslearn.com or from the CDC, that's the Centers for Disease Control. Have a valid CPR card. Have a current FBI BCI check and complete the sudden cardiac arrest training. General Sport Regulation 4 is relatively new. It requires all board approved, and that means your paid personnel and your volunteers who are properly credentialed be listed on the emergency contact form for each sport, in this case, girls gymnastics. In addition, the penalty for a coach not listed on that form is removal from coaching in the OHSAA Girls Gymnastics Tournament. Tournament managers and OHSA staff will check these forms, and coaches who are not listed will not be issued a floor credential. So please check with your administrator to ensure that your assistants and you are listed on the emergency contact form. As we reminded you last year, Girls Gymnastics Sports Regulation A 2.2 regarding scoring during the regular season. In regular season meets in which team entrants are unlimited, it is not permissible, I repeat, it is not permissible to designate which four gymnasts shall be eligible to have their scores added to produce a team score. Any of those eligible competitors shall be able to score for the team. This is just a reminder of the sudden cardiac arrest training. The training is up and ready to go as of August 1st of 2020. All coaches, again, paid and volunteer, go to either ODE's website and view a video and information sheet on sudden cardiac arrest, or you can view that from the OHSAA Sports Medicine page. You will take a post-assessment test and pass it at the rate of 8 out of 10, and that is if you're taking the course on ODE's learning management system. This LMS will allow you to print a certificate verifying completion, which then must be presented to your administration. The training is free. It must be done every year. And this course is the only acceptable course for this requirement. The NFHS course is not an acceptable course in Ohio. But please see your school administrator for any other acceptable formats for completion. If you cannot get into the ODE's LMS, you will need to complete this training in another acceptable format, and that can be discussed with your school administrator. Regarding selection of tournament officials, which is a, an extremely important task for our office, if you are a class one, which is level nine or above, or a class two, which is level eight and only eligible for sectional and district tournaments, you will complete a review exam and file an application, which is sent to all officials. You will need to denote your experience at the position for which the application is made. You will have to complete the state rules meeting and you cannot be an active current high school coach. We remind you that as an official, you have a very serious obligation to remove any student, any gymnast who is exhibiting signs, symptoms, or behaviors consistent with a concussion. Please take this responsibility seriously. And if you err, you do so on the side of protecting the gymnast. 
you will use this form, which is found here at this link, to report the removal of an athlete during competition to the OHSAA. Continuing on to discuss the important safety issue regarding concussion, all coaches and all officials must complete a concussion course offered by the CDC or the NFHS upon renewal or the initial issuing of their pupil activity participation permit. And of course, you shall remove any gymnast from practice or competition who is observed showing any signs or behaviors consistent with concussion. Coaches, this includes you from practice. Of course, officials, you will be the ones primarily responsible for removing an athlete who exhibits these signs and symptoms from a competition over which you are responsible. You shall not permit a gymnast to return to practice or competition on the same day as removal. If an official removes a student, that decision of the referee is final. Thereafter, you shall not permit a gymnast to return to practice or to competition without written medical authorization from a physician or, if not a physician, from someone who is authorized to work in collaboration or under the supervision of a physician. Athletic trainers do qualify under that category if your board authorizes them to sign that written medical authorization. You can click here to read all the documentation about concussions and the concussion regulations. And this information is also included in your gymnastics manual. From an administrative standpoint, uh, this is a good time for us to review items that maybe you've taken for granted over the past several years. But we believe this is a good reminder for veteran coaches and even better for newer coaches, especially those coming into the school environment from the club or um, the travel world. A basic premise of OHSA rules is that Someone is in charge of the event, and that someone is responsible to one of our member schools. It might be an athletic administrator or a school administrator who attends and actually oversees every event. However, sometimes in this sport, there will not be a school or athletic administrator at the event. And that ultimately means if another designee of the principal is not there, you as a head coach are in charge of all administrative responsibilities for that event. So what does that mean? You have to ensure the safety of all officials before, during, and after the meet. You have to be ready to deal with unruly fans and in these very challenging times, perhaps a COVID-19 non-compliant fan. You have to be able to deal with situations that require extreme medical attention. How will you activate EMS? Where's the nearest AED in your facility? Who will secure it if needed? Do you have an athletic trainer on site? for your meet. The OHSAA has a game management manual online to assist with these administrative responsibilities. And that URL is listed on this slide. Again, you are responsible for ensuring that you have a well-trained, preferably adult staff for your meets. Please see your AD or your principal to discuss these matters prior to your first home contest. I want to take this opportunity to remind you of bylaw 921, which addresses out-of-state competition. And this bylaw has actually changed for this year. It's not as stringent, but it does allow a gymnastics team, if they wish, to travel to states in the one province contiguous to Ohio, and that's Kentucky, West Virginia, Michigan, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and Ontario, Canada 
to compete without restriction, meaning that you don't have to be concerned any longer about missing school time. So you may travel to compete outside of these contiguous boundaries with the following restriction, and that is one time per sport per season. The penalty for violation is removal from the OHSA tournament. These EAP guides entitled Anyone Can Save a Life were sent to all high school athletic administrators in Ohio. We urge you to visit with your administrator so as to ensure that you, as a head coach, know what to do in the event of an emergency and have had a chance to practice these procedures. It is critical that all coaches know what to do, can activate EMS, locate and use an AED, and provide assistance if you are the only adult in charge at an athletic practice or contest. As you are aware, in order to have a safe season, you must follow all of the mandates and recommendations from Ohio's Governor's Office and the Ohio Department of Health. Please refer to the OHSA Resource Center, which you can click on here, for all information that has been developed to date. And please refer to this document, which we have inserted into your gymnastics manual, which is gymnastics specific at this link. As we get more information, we will continue to update you through the season, but prior to initiating practice, we recommend that you get familiar with all of these mandates and recommendations within these documents. It is now my pleasure to introduce our Director of Development for Girls Gymnastics, Mrs. Lori Powers Basinger, who will conduct the remainder of this rules interpretation meeting. Best wishes for a great season. Please do not hesitate to contact Emily Gates or me or Bo Rugg in officiating or of course, Lori Powers Basinger if you have any questions whatsoever throughout the season. It is now my pleasure to introduce Lori Powers Basinger, who will take you through rules changes and points of emphasis in girls gymnastics for the 2018-19 season.